When I'm talking to my patrons or other hi-fi aficionados about high-value turntables, the conversation always leads back to one of two things, either vintage, used, or Fluence. And I almost always say the same thing about Fluence turntables. How do they do it so cheap? So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the RT85N from Fluence. What's the N for, Nancy? Nutella? Nagaoka. Today's sponsor is the Weem Mini Streamer. Whether you want to build a whole home distributed audio system or just dip your toe into streaming, the Weem Mini has you covered. With Apple AirPlay 2, Bluetooth, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect, and a free customized application to bring in your own network music, as well as every major streaming platform. The Weem Mini Streamer is available from Amazon and the Weem website. Links are in the description in the pinned comment. Hey, I'm Randy, and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high-value hi-fi home theater and headphone equipment. And today, like I said, we're talking about the Fluence RT85N, which stands for Nagaoka, which is a cartridge. Before the channel even started, I was researching turntables, probably what you're doing right now. And I had a specific budget in mind. I wanted it to be around $300. And I ended up getting the RT83, which is a Fluence turntable. Comes in at about $350 and comes with an Ortofon 2M Red cartridge. Fluence is a direct-to-consumer company out of Canada. And they make, well, turntables and speakers. Well, I think that's about it. I think they make turntables and speakers. Powered speakers accessories, turntable accessories, weights, cork mats, things like that. Anyway, that's what I ended up getting. Fluence RT83. I upgraded the cartridges a few times. So I actually have a lot of experience with Fluence turntables. I've also reviewed the RT80, maybe 81. I can't remember. I'd have to look back. Maybe I'll link it in up there somewhere. So there's a total of six, six turntables and the Fluence lineup. You have the RT80, RT81, RT82, 83, 84, 85. It's six. The RT80 and 81 are basically the same turntable with a different cartridge. The RT82, 83, 84, 85 are basically the same turntable with a different cartridge. And in the case of the RT85, a different platter, acrylic. It's nice and clear or opaque. And I wish I knew then what I knew now, because if I knew what I know now, I would have just gone ahead and bought the RT85 or the RT85N. But more on that later. Let's talk about the turntable. So as I said, the RT82, 83, 84, 85 are fundamentally the same turntable. Let's talk about the feet. Starting with the feet, there are three adjustable feet on the RT85 and the RT85N and all the other ones. 82 up. Anyway, you rotate them either clockwise or counterclockwise. It would be strange if you rotated it any other way. They're also a little springy, so it's easy to level out a turntable with those type of feet, especially when you have a homemade crappy cinder block made stereo rack that I have, which sags in the middle a little bit. So it's very easy to get the turntable level, but there's a bit of give with the feet. So sometimes if it's a little bit off level and I just put one of those little leveling things on top of the turntable, I can just kind of pull up or push down and it levels things out. The way they have the feet designed is kind of like a fat giant Hershey kiss candy upside down on the turntable with the tip hitting the turntable. That's what it looks like, but it's not made out of chocolate. It's made out of rubber, which is good. Because if your room gets hot, you could have a real mess on top of your stereo cabinet if it was made out of chocolate. I didn't know how good these feet really were until I started getting other turntables in. And those turntables would have either fixed feet or, well, almost, they would always have fixed feet. And they just wouldn't be as nice. And so the only way to level those turntables was to stack some coins underneath or folded up paper to level it out. This is a belt driven turntable and there's not a multiple pulley system. So if one needs to change the speed, there's a knob 
on the front left hand corner of the turntable and you will switch it from off to either 33 or 45. If you need another speed, you're not going to get it. 33 and 45 is what this table does, but you don't have to switch the belt because it's electronic speed control. The belt is a little bit thicker than some of the competition, lays flat, but if you're concerned about the belt wearing out, I would buy more than one. Maybe keep, keep one in a, in a drawer somewhere. The plinth is also much thicker than other competitors' turntables at the same price. It's a good half inch or more thicker than a lot of the competition out there. And it has a very nice finish. Since I started off with the RT83, I, I really didn't know what to expect when some competitors' turntables started coming in. And what I can tell you is at the price, the finish on the Fluence is really good when compared to the competition. There's no vinyl stuff stuck on the front where it can kind of peel up on the corners or anything. It's got a very nice glossy finish. The hinges. Yes, I'm going to talk about hinges. The hinges on the Fluence RT85N and really any of the other ones, really good. They're plastic, but they're thick and beefy plastic and they have a very good spring inside. And again, I wouldn't know that this was really a good thing unless I would have experience with other turntables at the same price. And I do. And the hinges on the RT85 are better. And that may not move the needle for you, but for me, it's some of these little details where I start to see better quality that gives me a little bit more faith in the rest of the turntable. Because if someone cares about hinges, chances are they care about the rest of the components on the table. The counterweight. So the counterweight is pretty cool. Number one, it's not fixed. So it just pops on the end of the tone arm when you get it out of the box. On the interior, there's a dial with some numbers on it. South of that is where the business happens. It's the thicker, heavier, actual counterweight. It's really clever the way Fluence does the balancing of the cartridge or the tone arm, whatever you want to call it. So what one does is they take the tone arm out of the holder, take the cover off of the stylus, and you adjust the counterweight until the tone arm is perpendicular, just kind of hovering in the air. When it's hovering in the air, not going up, not going down, but right there, horizontal, you want to put it back in the holder and then you would turn the interior wheel, the one with the numbers on it, to zero. So where zero is 12 o'clock. And then you take the exterior one and you turn the whole assembly until it says two for two grams or whatever the tracking force weight is for your specific cartridge. Then on the side, there's a little anti-skate dial. You turn that to two and you're done. And you play some records. You should be all set up. But if you ever need to adjust it, it's just, you just adjust it on the end. You can get a weight and you can do it that way, but I have found that the way that they do it works just fine. It's very easy and it's very simple. And if you ever need to readjust, it's pretty straightforward. The tone arm, a little bit of a S shape or curved at the end. So it's not a straight tone arm. It seems solid. It seems a bit heavier than other turntables, but I've never heard a sonic penalty for it being heavier. I've always just thought it was built well. The whole mechanism, the hinges, all that good stuff, seems really solid. At the end of the tone arm is one of my favorite things about Fluence turntables, and that is a removable head shell. If you're anything like me, when you get something, the first thought in your head is, what can I change? What, how, how do I upgrade this? Instead of just being happy with it, I always think, how am I gonna make this better? Well, the cool thing about Fluence turntables is with the removable head shell, it makes switching out cartridges a 10 second evolution. Instead of having to break out magnifying glasses and cussing because you're dropping little tiny screws everywhere. Now, granted, you have to mount the new cartridge to a new head shell for it to be seamless and work easily. But a lot of times, if you're buying a new cartridge, you can get it already mounted on a head shell. And the head shell is the common, it's the whatever bayonet style of head shell they have. I think Fluence sells them. That's where I got my extra one. I think the ones off of Audio Technica turntables also work. Pretty common design, pretty standard design. So if you're looking for a new cartridge, get one that's pre-mounted on a head shell and you should be good to go. You won't even have to worry about lining things up with a new cartridge. Just unscrew your cartridge, put on the new one, and you're done. So after I had the RT83 for a while, I got upgrade-itis, like many of us do, and I wanted to get a different cartridge. And I got, you guessed it, the Nagaoka MP110. 
So before Fluence ever sent me this new turntable, I already had the MP110. Not only that, but I ended up buying the Ortofon 2M Blue stylus and switched the stylus off of my 2M Red to make the cartridge now a 2M Blue. I have a lot of experience with the Ortofon 2M Blue and the Nagaoka MP110. And coincidentally, those are my two favorite cartridges. With the RT85 and anything from 82 North, you're not going to get an integrated phono preamp. So you're either gonna need an external phono preamp or you're gonna need a phono preamp in your receiver or integrated amplifier to make this thing work. So let's talk about how it sounds. And I'm gonna talk about how it sounds compared to the 2M Red and the 2M Blue. I would describe the Nagaoka MP110 as being more relaxed, being a little bit fuller, butterier on the bottom end, having a bit more soul. The 2M Blue is definitely going to pull out more details in the music than the MP110. And I think the 2M Blue sounds more to me like a modern recording. I'm not saying it sounds bad at all. I love the 2M Blue. One of the best vinyl experiences I ever had was with the 2M Blue going through the iFi Zen Phono preamp. And if you blindfolded me, I wouldn't have been able to tell you the difference between that and a high res track 24 192 going through a really good DAC. It was that good. Detail, balanced sound signature, dynamic, fun, awesome. But I like to have different flavors. And the research led me down the rabbit hole to the Nagaoka MP110. Actually, it was Brock, one of my patrons, who was talking about how good the MP110 was. So I ended up getting that one. It's just a smoother presentation. It's a rich presentation. And if you pair it up with the right phono preamp or the right amp, you can bring up that detail a little bit so it can be a bit more neutral. Now, I'm not saying that the Nagaoka is not detailed. It is. It's just less detailed than the 2M Blue. Much more relaxed than the 2M Red. The 2M Red comes standard on the RT83, and I think it's a good cartridge. And I think a lot of people like the 2M Red. For me, it was a little bit too forward in the upper mid-range. I wanted something a little bit more balanced, or I wanted something a little bit more smooth, a bit warmer, a bit more soulful. And that's what I got with the MP110, and that's what I got with the 2M Blue. Good pairings for the Nagaoka MP110 for a phono preamp would be the Shit Manny, the iFi Zen, or the Pluto 2 from U-Turn. Those are going to have good synergy I just did a video where we talked about synergy. Good synergy with the Nagaoka. If you want a larger experience, maybe even warmer, more lush experience, I would look at the Fozzy Audio X2 Phono something something. It's a $60 Phono preamp. It's got a couple of tubes in it. It's very good. And it was a lot of fun when I paired it up with the MP110. Now that combo is not the most resolving combination on the planet. MP110 gave me a sense of space, very good dynamics, warmer more buttery presentation it's a listen to me all day long type of cartridge it is colored but i like the color it's thick juicy meaty cinnamony no it's not cinnamony it is nice though so looking back i wish i would have just bought the rt85 because with the rt83 i've already done two cartridge upgrades so the rt83 is 350 the Nagaoko is, I think, 120 or 130, so I'm already at that $500 mark. Then, if you want to add the acrylic platter, that's another $100. So, if you ever want to upgrade the platter or upgrade the cartridge, might as well just get the 85. That is, if you want the MP110 or you want the 2M Blue. Because in the long run, it's actually going to be a lot cheaper than doing it the way that I did it. For me, the Fluence 85s are, and I'll just call them the 85s, 85N, 85, 85s. The 85s are probably the best deal in turntables right now. For $500, you get an acrylic platter, you get a tone arm with a removable head shell and something that adjusts the counterweight very easily. Oh, and guess what? You also get semi-automatic operation, which means at the end of a record, the RT85N will actually stop the platter from rotating. It won't lift up the tone arm off of the record and return it back to start. But what it does is it actually stops the record so that your, your stylus isn't getting worn down prematurely. It's great for me because I have a tendency to get interrupted a lot when I'm listening to music or if you have a tendency to fall asleep. If you have narcolepsy, maybe this turntable is the one for you because it's not going to keep going all night long. It'll stop. 
The 85 has adjustable feet, has a removable head shell, has semi-automatic operation, has a plinth that's a lot larger than the competition, has good hinges, I know, if, you're, if you want really good hinges, it has good hinges, I like the hinges. And it's just built, in my opinion, better than the competition. Not only is it built better than the competition at this price point, it also comes with better cartridges. The 2M Blue and the Nagaoka MP110 are both fairly expensive cartridges, and most tables from the competition at this price point are using less expensive cartridges. I'm not saying that those tables don't sound good. They do. But in my experience, most of the sonic improvements on turntables comes from the cartridge. Everything matters, I know. Vibration, resonance, things like that. Internally, maybe it can be beaten by the competition, but at the price, I haven't heard anything beat a Fluence. Because a lot of times the Fluence already has a cartridge that is twice as expensive as what the competition would have at the same price point. So yeah, this probably sounds like a Fluence commercial. It's not. I just There's just no other turntables out there that aren't used or vintage turntables at this price point that offer more than the Fluence line does. The only thing I think people could pick apart with the Fluence turntables is the styling. It's not as sleek as some of the competition. It's not as cool. It doesn't bother me though because I think they look good to begin with and they're a little bit more traditional, a little bit beefier like what I had when I was growing up. Well, not what I had, what my parents had growing up. So if you don't like the styling, then you're going to have to pass. But everything else, I, if there's a better turntable out there at the price, I haven't found it. Fluence turntables, the 85 and the 85N will get my highest recommendation. If you can't afford the RT85, then start with the RT82 because you can upgrade that. You can make it into an RT85 or an RT85N eventually and you don't have to put all the money up front. But in the long run, you're gonna end up paying more if you do it that way than if you just pull the trigger on the 85 or the 85N to begin with. Either way, you're going to get a great turntable and one that you can upgrade along the way. So, if you wanna support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheapaudioman. Every Sunday night, we have patron-only Zooms. We also have a patron-only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music or Tidal. There's a link in the description. Sign up, you get a few months for free. I get a couple of dollars. You can also buy the Fluence RT85N through the links. Those are affiliate links, which means if you buy a turntable through there, I will get a commission, but it doesn't cost you any more, so it's a great way to support the channel. So don't binge watch anything on Netflix or Hulu. Binge listen your favorite vinyl record on your Fluence RT85N and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.